Hey guys, just want to give you a uh, update on the Golan 4.6 stroker install. Uh, I just want to give you some tips and tricks, things I wish I had known before I put it in. Uh, just small things like that to make your install easier. And we've got a small list here. So one of the big things I wish I kept off my engine, or at least had ready to go, would be the engine dowel pins or alignment pins. They help with uh, alignment and keeping your bell housing from cracking because of torque and load. Uh, I found mine at a Mopar dealer. It took about a week to come in. So you can usually get yours out of your old engine if you can. I would recommend doing that. Save yourself some money. So that's the first thing I would do. Uh, proper dipstick. I couldn't get the dipstick out of my original block. It was just seized in there. So I figured I was getting a new engine. I was getting a new dipstick and dipstick tube. Uh, I should say the tube itself. Uh, new dipstick tube. I got mine from Morris 4x4. Fit pretty well. Uh, I didn't want to seat all the way at one point, but I just got a rubber mallet, tapped it in gently until it seated, uh, bolted it down, no problems, uh, anything more than you should, so just keep that in mind if you don't save that, you know, you can order one, you have one ready. And then the oil pressure sensor adapter, uh, it's, it's the small brass piece that your oil pressure sensor actually threads into. I did not save mine, and I had a hard time finding one. Uh, I got mine from a place back home where I used to live in Rhode Island, a place called Dead Jeep. Very big used uh, you know, parts dealership. They have any, any, you know, XJs, Cherokees, uh, YJs, T, anything Jeep. You know, they'll rip it apart, sell you parts. And uh, Ray, the owner, a really good guy, uh, helped me out finding that part and got it out here in time. So if you, if you have yours, save it in time. If not, you can contact him, they'll have them. We can try a local junkyard, Facebook guys, something like that. Uh, and then I had one small issue, nothing bad, uh, more of a uh, manufacturing error on the distributor end. Uh, the distributor, the tab, is about like a U shape for the bolt and clamp actually hold it down. Uh, Mine, I had to file down a little bit. I asked Chad before I did that, but that's what he said. It's a very hit or miss thing. Some Jeeps have that, some don't. So mine was one of those Jeeps where I had to file it down just a little bit in order to get my timing right. Uh, just poor manufacturing on the distributor part. Uh, the distributor itself is fine. But I said to take a little bit more material off in order to get my top dead center and timing correct. And for that bolt to go in you know, by hand first without forcing it or doing anything bad like that. So. If you have a distributor, it'll be, you know, early 99 down. If you have the camshaft synchronizer, same idea, same flange. You may have to just file that down a little bit. I would still call Chad before you do that, just so he knows, uh, just to confirm. Because, you know, obviously timing's a big part of your engine. You, you don't want to mess up that, because that'll mess up the internals of your engine. Uh, and then the braking procedure, uh, in the setup guide, that Chad supplies you a going engine. He says about 500 miles on the Joe Gibbs oil he has in there uh, and then after that at least here it says we recommend 1040 oil and uh, only Napa Gold or Wix filters I believe the Napa Gold filters are Wix uh, I think Wix is owned by Man Hummel filters so I guess if you had one of those also very good filter and I would recommend that too I've always run that or at least Mopar filters uh, just because you're paying you know a lot of money for a high quality engine, you might as well put a high quality filter to make it last as long as you can and perform at its best. Uh, I forgot to write this down too, but the proper Mopar sensors. Uh, I ordered uh, a proper Mopar O2 sensor. Uh, my Bosch one in there now is not acting bad, but the mapping is I think, a little more on the rich side, and he did explain that over the phone with me. So if you get the opportunity to, you might as well get the Mopar sensor ahead of time and just put it in. That way your computer will, you know, optimize the performance in, you know, your new engine and you get the most out of it, which obviously you want to do that because you just got a stroker and, you know, you want to get more power than a four liter. So I'd recommend that just to do it. I mean, unless you have brand new sensors, you want to run them for a little bit, but your computer's going to learn it to those and then you have to relearn it to the Mopar. So if it was me, get the Mopar, get it done right the first time and just start driving the thing. And a few people ask me in my other Instagram and things like that, uh, how long it take to install. If I had all my parts ready to go, I had a lot of wait time here. I'm in central Iowa right now. Sometimes things take a little while to get here. 
Uh, if I had everything ready to go, it probably would have taken me the weekend. Um, some of the things I would recommend though is getting a, a transmission jack. I usually just get a jack and try to muscle it in there. And I've had really good luck with that in the past, but with this one I had new motor mounts and they're very stiff and firm and had no give flex downwards. So it was kind of a pain in the butt to get that to line up. So Harbor Freight, they had a transmission jack. I think with the inside track club member, I think we ended up paying 100 20, 110 bucks. So it was worth it though. You can do fuel tanks with that in the future, things like that. Actually, anything heavy and awkward like that, it's adjustable, which is nice. Uh, these are straps, your trimmers will fall onto you, which is safe. Uh, just by the minimal help out here, just my mom and father uh, helped me with you know the small things like getting the engine in and just lining things up. But everything else was on me to do. So anything like tool wise like that, I'd recommend if you're doing it by yourself, unless you're bringing it to a shop. Uh, good investment for your tool collection in the future anyways if you are going to continue doing more Jeep things yourself and uh, getting a lot of good hardware I got rid of the external Torx bolts on top of the bell housing uh, I reused them a couple times this is my third engine in this Jeep so I figured we'll just get grade 8 you know normal hex bolts get rid of those external Torx uh, they were getting a little worn out so let's go to your local hardware store I got grade 8 just to you know be safe and strong I got two of those, all set with that, and uh, you know, you're doing you know, the nice electrical grounds and everything, too. Nice hardware is good for grounds, so I recommend that as well. Not a necessity, but at least clean up your hardware, your ground areas, that way, all the electronics will function at the best they can. And uh, parts that I would recommend that make sure you have again, I'll go through that uh, PCV valves. So, I had a small issue where this was taking in a little bit of oil, I think. Uh, I had the wrong hose, so the PCV valve was not functioning right. So I ordered another one, got the right one. I haven't had the problem since, but you know, it was a little smoky. I checked the plug, had just a little bit of oil, so I opened the intake and saw oil inside the intake. Not a lot. Uh, that's on my end, not going or anything like that. So make sure you have a good functioning PCV valve. Uh, I just got a junky one from O'Reilly and it wasn't good, so I wouldn't recommend that one. Get a good Mopar one. Uh, I believe Crown Automotive makes a decent one as well. Uh, I mentioned the dowel pins, so I would get those. Uh, pilot pushing, if you're a manual transmission like I am, Chad does not supply that. There's a national part number uh, that comes with the bushing and the actual pilot bearing. There's one unit that you just tap into the crankshaft. I just got a large socket and a dead blow went slow. Tapped it in until it was flushed and seated, and it worked great. Uh, coolant, things like that, just get fresh coolant. I did a new heater core, so I wanted all fresh cooling system, you know, no previous junk in that in my new engine. Uh, thermostat, you can buy a new thermostat or use yours. If you live in a uh, hot area, I would probably recommend a lower temperature. Chad does as well in this uh, technical guide setup. I would get a lower one. Uh, here in the Midwest, it does get hot and cold, so I'll kind of just pick the middle and kind of went with that. Uh, Radiator hoses, get that new, you might as well. Again, you're putting all this time and effort into a new engine. You might as well start fresh and clean, not have any issues down the road. Uh, belt, I'd recommend a new belt, just because again, you're putting all this effort in, you might as well start fresh. And the O2 sensor, I think I spoke about that already. And I'll do a little cold start for you guys. Uh, this has been sitting overnight, just letting it roast in the lovely sun for you. So uh, I'll do a little cold start for you. And uh, you can see how it starts up, no problem. Idle's great, things like that. And uh, some of the pros of why I chose the Golan Stroker over doing an LS swap or any kind of engine swap. I went with the Golan Stroker because this is my daily driver. I've had this since high school. So this thing's been beat to crap. It's been through too much probably and you know, a lot of learning experiences on this. And you know, just in general, it's been good uh, this is my third engine uh, my first one I punched a hole in the side of the block uh, piston 2 kind of just evaporated went through the side of the block the pan I think it had a broken skirt and just kind of you know went to the atmosphere and left us uh, this second engine I had still ran and it ran pretty well it was just really worn out uh, started to develop a uh, rod knock on five and four, I believe, when I took it apart. So I could have kept running it, but I 
figured I'd save it. So I took it apart. Uh, the local guy bought it for his ZJ. So I'd rather see the engine get saved and reused and just scrapped. So that left me kind of empty handed. What am I going to do for an engine? So I've always kind of eyeballed the Stroker engines. Uh, Chad, the Golan engine seemed like the best bet because you can get the dyno service, which is nice. It saves you a lot of the hassle breaking it in and things like that. Uh, you can get to watch your engine run before you even get it, so you feel pretty confident about it. Uh, you know, everyone wants to do LS swaps and things like that, and those aren't bad. Uh, there's diesel swaps. I've seen guys do the TDIs or Mercedes, and that was the other one I was really close to doing was the Mercedes diesel. But then it came down to, again, uh, reliability and daily driver. And this is pretty much factory. You drop it in, your computers know otherwise. And that's what I liked about it because as a daily driver, realistically, the more stock you can keep it, uh, at least drivetrain wise and engine, you know, tuning wise, things like that. I know it's not stock at all, but uh, it makes it a little easier to reference, you know, your service guides or, you know, you can bring it to a local mechanic and, you know, oh, I want an oil change in my Cherokee and go get the normal part number. They can do it. You bring in your Mercedes diesel, you know, that's almost 40, 50 years old. Some guys may know what that is. Some may not. You bring it, you know, custom LS Jeep into a shop. Some guys will touch it. Some guys won't touch it because it's not factory. You know, if that's true or not, I'm not sure, but regardless of the point, you know, it's, it's a little more user friendly, I guess you'd say, because because that that's what the Jeep came with, and uh, ELS isn't a bad engine either. Uh, my engine dyno at I think 330 torque and two 283 horsepower, which is about small early uh, LS generation V8 power, like the 48 or early 53s. So you, you know, if you're gonna do an LS, you know, you might as well just get the six liter at that point. But then you got to change everything out your drivetrain, you know, transmission most likely, axles, transfer case, maybe a transfer case, but in general you're going to upgrade everything else, whereas the Golden Stroker, everything else will work with you in this Jeep, which is nice, and again, that keeps it a little more, you know, uh, user friendly, which that's what I wanted to go for. So I have the factory AX-15 in this, I swapped this from an automatic to manual, it's done great, uh, you know, it shifts fine. The torque is incredible, which I really like. I have 48s and 35s, and it moved pretty well before, even with the worn out 4.0, and now it scoots right along, no problem with the stroker, which is awesome. So, if you're looking for a little more power, a little more horse, a little more torque, drop in. Uh, yes, it will cost you, but you don't have to you know, do custom gauges, mop by your transmission, motor mounts, exhaust, anything like that. It's just drop in, run it, Keep on, you know, four wheeling and driving. Whatever you're doing with your Jeep or your Stroker, whatever that Stroker's going in, you just keep on driving it, which is awesome. So, I'll do a little cold start for you guys, and uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions, and even about the Jeep engine, things like that. Uh, let me know, and I can see if I can answer those for you. Just got out of the glove box. This will be a nice cold start. Neutral, haven't started all day. 